Uh, Tania, you have all the names? Yes, Marilyn, you're in and you're good to go. And I have all, all right. Okay, then we have a quorum. And, yes, we uh, do, you Marilyn. Said yes. All right, very good. All right, then. Um, now, I have to look at the uh, agenda on my uh, web. Uh, um, sakes. All right. First, we have the uh, call to order and introductions. Let's go. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Well, I call it to order. So now we go around the table, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, each of the members should uh, introduce themselves. I'm sorry. What? Each of the members should introduce themselves. Oh yeah, right. Okay. Well, um, this is Marilyn Deshant. I'm chairman of this committee, and let's go around the table, or let's go around the whatever, and introduce ourselves. Okay. This is Melanie Monson. I, I'm sorry. What was that? Melanie Monson. Oh, Helly Melanie. Okay. Next. Sandy Graves, vice chair. Hey, Sandy. Hey, voice only. You and me. Yeah, me too. Me too. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hello. Rob Sirkin. Yeah. District two. Oh, hey, Bob. Rob. <laughs> All righty. Next. Is there someone else there? Is someone else there? We have uh, Clinton Wynn on, who I believe is having audio problem. Well, I'm sorry. That was Clinton, did you say? Yes, ma'am. And is Clinton a visitor? Clinton Wynn, uh, W-Y-N-N. -N. He's having audio issues. Oh, I see. Okay, very good. He's a board member. I repeat, please. He's a board member. Clinton is a, oh yes, Clinton is from um, Mike Moore, right? Everybody, uh, some people are shaking their head yes, and Tania is saying no. <laughs> Rob Secure well, saying Tania, no. Tania, Tania, who is he representing? I thought he was appointed by um, Mike Moore. No, I, I believe he's either, is it Wells? I have to go back in my file. Well, that's fine, I think Tania. I think you can do that Mike later. Wells. He's definitely not Mike Moore because then he would be replaced. Yeah. Is me. it the Wells? I think it's Wells. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everybody's shaking their head. Wells. Mike Wells. Okay, that's right. All righty. Do we have anyone else? Anyone else there? Uh, Lori Sh Schradinger. Hopefully, I didn't botch your name. Just uh, came on. What's the first name, please? Lori. Lori Schadiger, that's our business manager. Oh, your business manager. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I okay. couldn't go to work. Lori Schadiger. Okay. How about Kelly Miller? Is, Ke is Kelly Miller there? No, she is not. Okay. Well, okay then. Do we have anyone else um, present at this meeting that I do not have on my list at this time? David Goldstein from the County Attorney's Office is also on. Okay, David, thank you. Um, anyone else? Marilyn, all of the MPO staff are also on. Okay, very good. And so with these names, Melanie, Sandy, Steve, Rob, uh, and myself, oh, and also Clint, uh, Clinton, right? Or is it Wayne? Well, we, we now have that, um, quorum and um now okay um do we have anyone from the public that wishes to make any comment we do not no one from the public all right next item would be approval of the minutes uh, there was in the agenda uh, a chairman, set of minutes chairman yeah I'm uh, sorry. there's there's an item that we did uh, miss it. So I, item number uh, two, the virtual meeting requirements. I'm sorry. I, okay, I, I might be looking at, I am so sorry. I'm looking at an old agenda here. Okay, let's take a look here. Virtu virtual meeting requirements. And now what are we supposed to do with that? Uh, actually, I was going to speak it in. Uh, Mr. Goldstein will probably add in 
anything that I may not uh, have said. But just to let you know, the reason why we're in the virtual meeting context or structure of what we're doing now is because of, as everyone know about uh, what happened with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And so yeah, uh -huh. now we're doing the meetings virtually. The initial yeah. executive order that came from the governor's office uh, extended the virtual meetings. We could have them up until May 8th. That became uh -huh. somewhat of an issue for us, but uh -huh. with the extensions of the, uh, with new executive orders and extension to now July 8th, uh, uh -huh. and also the board also um, passed a resolution that not only included the the OCC board and the planning commission board, but also extended to the MPL board and its committees. And uh -huh. we are now able to have um, virtual meetings through the month of June, June 30th, even though the executive order goes to July 8th. So we are good to go on this meeting. And yeah. David, if there's anything I have left off, you can add to it. Thank you. Just, just okay, two things, thanks. just yeah. two things, Ronnie, if you could cover how the public can participate in this meeting, um, and then I'll, there's one more issue, but cover that first. Sure. sure. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, uh, there's two ways that the public can participate. The meeting notice actually was published in the as a legal ad and also went out to the websites and everyone who was able to, everyone has an opportunity to speak via an email. They can call in or call in and state their name, address and all, or via email. We would right. get that information and have that available. And as you noticed, that there was no one that called in to these to this meeting at this time. I, I can't notice it. I mean, it might have been what on the screen if I got in visually, but that's fine. I appreciate that information, and I understand now yeah. that we will probably have our next meeting in June. But if I understand correctly, also about future meetings, our July meeting will not take place by all. Uh, by previous agreement of the um, MPO board. Am I correct, Tania? July is a canceled date. Yes, you are correct, Marilyn. Yes, yeah, sorry. Very My good. Mute. Uh, all right. Can you, can you, can you all hear me? Can, yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, the reason I mention that is because, so we will be meeting again this way, supposedly, uh, June 8th. But there will be no meeting in July because that's already been um, canceled, so to speak, previously. And that leaves August. So prior to August, the office of the MPO will let us know whether it's going to be in person or uh, online again, correct? That's correct. Okay. All righty then. Okay. Can Thank I you. just add one thing? Um, David, yes. The Board of County Commissioners at the next meeting is likely to extend the requirement that all meetings be virtual through the end of June. After yes. June, we're kind of up in the air. We, it'll depend on oh. action from the governor at that point. But we're all going to right. be meeting virtually through the end of June for sure. Okay, yes, I did understand that. And I'll just put a question mark next to August. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you. All righty now, looking back at the agenda, uh, you now we've now um, covered the virtual meeting requirements. Uh, I'm hearing that there are no emails from the public. Is that correct? To, to my knowledge, there are no emails or calls. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Uh, to my knowledge, there have been no emails or calls. All right, just wanted to make sure public no emails, no calls. All righty. Next, we have approval of the meeting minutes. Are, am I correct at this point? I believe so. Yes. All right. All righty. Very good. Let's. Um, let's. I got to get to that page. I have a question. Oh dear. Okay. How do I flip the page? Oh, right there. Um. I noticed that. Um, I'm not getting there. What page is it on, Tania? The uh, minutes. It's on page 13, Marilyn. 13, okay. 13. I'm not sure why this is not clicking here. All right, there, there we go. Oh, God. 
13, 13, okay. 13. All right. It looks like what we have is minutes from the meeting of February. Is that right? We have both February and March. March. February and March. All right. Well, for some yes. reason, I thought March was missing. No. Um, all right. All right. Let me just keep going down here. Um, On 17 is March. Okay. I see it now. Okay. All right. Well, one thing I did notice, um, some of the items we spoke about and had some personal thoughts on, some of us members, that are not in part of the minutes. But I do understand that the office has need to be um, concise and to get down some, the uh, major points. So with that being said, do we have anyone from the, the CAC with any comments? regarding these minutes. This is Melanie. Yes. On um, the March minutes it uh, for meeting attendees, I'm not on there and I was at that meeting. All right, then uh, we'll fix that, right, Tania? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else who has any comment? Marilyn okay. Dickman. On, yes, on the Steve. February meeting, I was, I, I was not in attendance, but I had an excused absence. I have an email to that, as, to that effect. Okay. Yeah, well, we definitely want to make a uh, note of the excused absences. So, uh, Tania will fix that one, too, correct? Correct. All righty. Now, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. speaking that had the excused absence so that I can uh, write this down? I'm sorry, who's Steve speaking? Ari. Rivero. Okay. Was that a question? Yes. Are you? Are you all set? It's you, Ari. Was Steve Hickman had an excused absence? All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, one other thing. I want to get back to where I was. All right. See, I want to see if I am. Okay. I gotta find it. Um. I mean, just give me a second here. I'm scrolling back. Okay. On page eight, uh, 16, okay, let's see here. 16, it would be item 10 or X, CAC roundtable. This is minor, but I'm sure it wouldn't be minor to Port Ritchie. Let's make sure we spell Ritchie correctly, please. It, it, it shows itself as I-R-I-C-H-I-E, and it should be E-Y. All righty. She. Um, okay, great. Now, are we all set? Um, are we all set on the minutes? Um, hey, Where was that Rob. mistake? I'm sorry. Rob, do you have a question? Tania, go ahead and finish what you were about to do. <laughs> what, what, what was that mistake, Marilyn? Pardon me, uh, Tania. What? Where was that issue with the Richie spell wrong? Okay, it would be on page sixteen down to where it says uh, item 10 or X, CAC member round table, first line could reach out to Port Ritchie to get representation at. So I just wanna have Port Ritchie spelled correctly for the minutes, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's great. Now, Rob, did you have a question? Yeah, I was also at att in attendance to that meeting at the EDC. Oh, yes, and I remember that. So let's make sure that Rob's name appears. Now, is there any member of the CAC with any further content, uh, comment on the minutes for these uh, meetings of February and March? All right, then let's have a vote. Um, all in favor, aye. Wait, Marilyn? Wait, wait, wait. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so wait, wait. for most virtual motions, you need to have the motion maker identify themselves. And then. Oh, that's right. Somebody... Motion. I forgot. So far, I got to tell you, this is stressful. <laughs> Trying <laughs> to do this thing this way is making me forget things. All right. Madam Chairman, this is Melanie. Yeah. I There's one more mistake on um, page 19. Page um, 19. On number. 
10, it says Ralph Laird instead of Ralph oh. Laird is all. Right. There's no D on that name, yep. correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, Madam Chair, I, I would like to say that for those who are not speaking, could you mute your mics because we're getting a lot of feedback. Can I do what to what? I'm saying to those who are not speaking, uh, could they mute their mics because we're getting a lot of feedback? Okay. You're okay. You're okay. I'm okay. Good, because yes, I don't have a mic. I'm just talking into my computer. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Okay. All right, then. This yeah. is Sandy Graves, and I would like to Sandy. make a motion. Hi. I'd like yeah. to make a motion. I guess it's time to approve the March, February, March minutes yeah. as okay. amended. As All amended. right, as Rob amended. Sirkew, Excellent. Do we second. have a second? This is Rob Sirkew, and I will second. Okay, so we have Sandy with the motion and Rob with the second. So that um, completes that um, particular order of business. Okay, well, so Marilyn, on to the. You, you need yes. to take the vote. You need to take oh, a vote. Yeah. I'm so sorry. And, and everybody has <sighs> to vote individually so that you can hear their vote. Oh, okay. Everyone go around the table and say AI or, you know, yes or no. Melanie Monson approve. Sandy okay. Graves. Sandy Graves approve. Mm -hmm. Rob Sirkew approve. Mm -hmm. Steve Hickman approve. Mm -hmm. Am I the final person? Clinton All right, Lynn Marilyn approved. Deshaun. Who was that? Clinton Wynn. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. And um, Marilyn Deshaun, approve. So does that take care of that? Oh, wait a minute. All in favor of the motion, say aye. We aye. approve. Aye. Okay. They Is did that, that okay now, they... David? Yeah. You didn't, okay now? you didn't have to do that last part. It, when they each individually voted approved, that was enough. Oh, oh, that was enough. Good, good. Yes. Okay. All right, then. Now, with that, let's take a look at our agenda. Approval of the meeting minutes is done. Report on MPO board actions. Meeting of March 12, 2020. Who will be providing that report? Manny? Yes, I will do that, ma'am. Um, in the uh, MPO packet for uh, the previous meeting, which is also attached in your agenda on page 20. I'm uh -huh. just going to hit on the two action items that was before the board, same uh -huh. as the ones that came before the CAC. We extended the contract for Tyndall Oliver to June 30th to finish the uh, LRTP, and also there is a congestion management component that they will uh -huh. finish. Mm -hmm. We also had a resilient Tampa Bay uh, transportation pilot project presentation mm -hmm. done by uh, Cambridge Systematics, the consultant to the uh, our counterpart, Hillsborough MPO. Uh -huh. Other than that, there was a couple of presentations. Uh, one was about uh, uh, Scott uh, Pringle from WSB on the T-Barda Regional Rapid Transit Study. And then mm -hmm. we also had a Office of Economic Growth, Mr. David Engel, presented on microtransit virtual simulation. And uh, basically, that was the bulk of the meeting. All righty. Do we take um, a motion on that? I mean, do we no, have to vote on this is just uh, providing information as to what That's happened. providing information. Okay, very good. That, okay, then, thank you for that report. Does anyone have any questions? Well, okay then, if we don't have any questions, we'll move on to the next item, which if I'm correct, is number um, 6A on page 22, am I correct? Are we on the same page, everyone? Are we on the same page? Yes, Marilyn. Yes, we are, Marilyn. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're not being able to see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, what we have here is the subject is public hearing to approve unified plan. Now, if I am correct, is Ari at this meeting? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Ari. Um, if I am correct, this is what you sent to us oh, about a month or so ago so that we members of the CAC would review it and send in to you 
our comments, thoughts, or approval, so to speak. Uh, so this is the same item, is that right? Yes, this is the same item, and thank you so much for reviewing it and uh, sending me the comments. I appreciate that very much. Well, we appreciate the work you're doing, so thank you for that. Now, did you need um, any kind of a quorum from the CAC to move on with this, or just, um, yes, I read it, and it's all good. Was that enough? Um, so, during this meeting, we we will uh, request that the CAC recommend approval to the oh, MPO board. Um, okay. So, I'll just uh, briefly go over, oh, just uh, very great. briefly. Um, so, the UPWP is a document uh -huh. that uh, the MPO has to um, submit every two years. And uh, basically, it is uh, a, an attempt to capture all our um, all the income as well as our activities and expenses. And um, um, we basically, what we have new this time around are um, some, um, we're gonna have a micro transit study. We are also going to um, focus on some TISMO activities. TISMO stands for Transportation System Management and Operations, which is an attempt to improve congestion without having um, increased capacity projects. Mm -hmm. Let's say examples of that would be like signal retiming. We are also mm -hmm. going to try to focus on improving our freight routes. Um, those are just some of the things that we added. Um, and again, I appreciate the comments that came in. Some of the uh, things that will change a little bit um, from the initial UPWP, we tried to address all the comments that we received, and at this point, we will update some of the um, some of the comments received by PCPT, and we'll incorporate those in our UPWP. Are there any questions for staff? I don't have any further questions. Does the uh, CAC committee have any questions? Okay. I have one, Marilyn, just real quick. And it's sure. just, a, it's a curiosity question. Since this will deal somewhat with transit systems uh, going forward in two years, do you see, are y'all seeing any kind of change in patterns that might be affected by this coronavirus as far as people starting to rethink uh, working from home and, and not using the roads and transit so much? I'm oh. glad you brought that up, Sandy, because I had the same thought. So, um, asking no. staff, and I don't want I don't want it to be a long situation. I just wondered if this was going to be entering into that. Sandy, uh, Kurt can chime in, and he'll uh, he'll speak to that point. If we can wait until my update, I'll uh, I'll brief that in my update. But okay, there, that's uh, good. There are Thank some you. things that you guys need to be aware of. Thank you, but yeah. So we do need to, though, um, we do need to make a motion to um, to support this draft situation, right? Or to, to support yes, the- Yes, we do. Writing. All right. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. All right, this then. Is, Does anyone else on the CAC have any questions regarding this particular matter? With that being said, I'm looking for a motion and a second. This is Rob Circu. All motion to approve. Rob. Sandy second. Gray. Sandy, Sandy Gray. Second. Thank you. Now, um, now I guess I go through it again. So, Mel Melanie, why don't you start? Melanie Monson, approve. Mm hmm. Sandy approves. Sandy Graves, approve. Rob approves. Rob Circu, approve. And Steve? Steve Hickman approves. Okay, and I approve. Um, Don't forget my Yeah, who, who am I forgetting? Is it Wayne? Wayne. Don't oh, forget Wayne. Clint. Wayne, what, what, right, sorry Wayne. Okay, so I have Melanie, Sandy, Rob, Steve, myself, and Wayne. Do I miss anyone? 
Oh, you I agree. Sweat. Uh, you sweat. Win. win, not Wayne. W Y N N. Oh, so sorry. And that's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, and who now else? We we I'm sorry. I'm still not hearing that name. After win, uh, win who, who, who else? Was there someone else who said approve? No, that's all of it. Oh, all right. Very good. Very good. But just, um, Marilyn, one it, second. It's Clinton Wynn. Wynn is his oh, last name. Clinton. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. You know, I'm really, I'm so sorry, but I am having a bit of a challenge hearing here. Okay. Um, okay. With that being said, we have a, a motion to approve. And I understand with David's approval that this now finishes that as we have no one um, not approving. So I guess we just move on now to the next item, correct? Is that correct? Do we move on now? That is yes. Correct. Very good. Thank you so much to staff, Ari, for taking care of this for us. Now we move on to page 23, and that, I believe I'm correct. Um, no, 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 no. That is the... That's part of this, okay. <sighs> I don't have my page It's 26, Marilyn. 26, moving on, moving on to 26, and there we are with item um, 6B, correct? Yes. That's correct. All right, what, okay, now what we have here, federal requirements, joint certification, uh, the CAC to review and approve joint certification documentation. Um, Manny and or Ari, uh, give us a little background, please. Okay, I'll be, this is Manny. I'll be presenting this item. This Thank is, you. This, uh, this is an annual joint certification by FDOT and MPO. Basically, mm -hmm. what it covers is that the MP, uh, we are all assessing how we, the MPO, are in compliance with federal and state laws when it comes mm -hmm. to, uh, Metropolitan Transportation Planning. This, mm -hmm. uh, again, is a joint FTOT and MPO effort. Mm -hmm. It's for the calendar year 2019, basically covers from January 1st to J J December 31st of 2019, and it was conducted in March of 2020. Mm -hmm. this, there is, in your packet, you have a certification summary and a Joint certification statement. Uh, the statement is a one page that the MPO chair and the district secretary will sign off on. And um, but the certification summary, it's some good reading to go through that because it kind of documents what are some of the things that the MPO is doing well. They're under the category of notable achievements, and there is some uh, about six or seven recommended actions. These are things for us to consider and try to do. And then obviously uh, there are some three, about three corrective actions that uh, we need to kind of work on um, as we move along with our transportation planning processes. Um, at this point, we're recommending that the CAC basically make a recommendation to the MPO that this planning process is certified. So if there All are right. any questions, I'll be a, uh, more than glad to answer or... Mm -hmm. Very or good then. Me. Do we have any questions from the CAC committee? This is Melanie. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. Steve, you go ahead. Uh, Manny, uh, can you... Uh, confirm for the CAC committee that the recommended actions have been dealt with. Uh, it, it really talks about a lot of errors in submission of invoices and whatnot in the, in the spreadsheet issues. Uh, has, has all this been uh, fixed? So, uh, Steve, the, the, this is just a very recent occurrence, and we are going through these and trying to uh, respond to DOT. They are our great partners and we work very closely. And, uh, you know, this is something that we run over together and we are beginning to knock some of these out. Uh, and I'll give you an example on the recommended actions. The third bullet 
is referring to having to produce the UPWP where the budget tables are uh, created in a spreadsheet format. And I wanted to let you know that the UPWP that Ari just presented already has that in there and we've already addressed that. Um, on, on page 29, the, uh, the, the next bullet talks about, this is something that we'll be talking about later on in this agenda. DOT has been asking the MPO over several years and we have been responding a little bit at a time. They're wanting us to present to DOT a single list, ideally, of what the county's priorities are. We did have up to 10 tables of priorities of different modes at one point in time. And we tried to combine them and to last year, we combined them to five tables. And this year in the draft, you will see that we have shrunk that to even four. So we're working towards that goal um, as, far, as far as one of these comments on recommended actions. So we are addressing them one at a time. Um, if you look in the corrective actions, we're having a lot of issues and we're trying to work them out as far as billings and invoices in a timely manner. It's really not, I don't want to, it's not a really NPO staff's fault. I don't know if you really want to chime in, but we're working with the county to kind of streamline some of these processes so we can submit in time. Uh, yes, this is Ronnie Blackshear with the NPO staff. Staff uh, has been working with county officials and also the FDOT to more or less streamline the invoicing process. There has been things that have been done in the past on both parts, on both in, in, with regards to the NPL, the county, and DOT and how the invoicing process has progressed. And we are working through those things that still a work in progress, but we have made great strides into addressing many of those issues. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Manny, uh, this, this is Steve Hickman with a follow-up to this. Um, first of all, thank you for your response. Is there, this is performed every, this certification is performed every two years. Is there an opportunity for us to invite, from a transparency perspective, to invite the uh, DOT back into our shop um, to review these corrective actions to ensure, and to get some kind of written comments from them that for our benefit and for our MPO's benefit, that we have addressed these issues satisfactorily to DOT, rather than waiting two years for that to happen. Uh, Mr. Hickman, uh, this, this certification is actually on an annual basis. And when we make those corrections to DOT, they will know of those, that we've addressed those issues. And if it's something that I would say the committees would like to know about as to where we stand, uh, at a certain point in time in the future upon addressing those, we can provide that information to you if need be. And Steve, Steve uh, Jensen, our FDA liaison is actually on the call and he's in every uh, CAC meeting also. So there's that level of transparency that's already initiated. So if you have a question, he's on the call as well. Good to know. Um, Steve, did you have any other questions? Well, I'm going to make a recommendation, and you know we'll we'll see how everybody responds to it. And you know, I know I know what I do when I have audits with my company, and I have uh, recommendations and corrective actions to deal with in my board. Um, I, I think we ought to have a uh, a formal uh, written uh, response from uh, from the MPO staff dealing with these that the uh, CAC will see and ultimately goes up to the MPO so they see it, uh, the MPO board, uh, and, not let, and not just wait until the next certification. I, I think we have to be proactive rather than reactive is what I'm trying to say. And maybe I don't understand how uh, Tallahassee and how uh, Pasco County works with, with responses to these kind of audits, but I think that uh, these are of a, of a serious enough issue that we ought to be proactive and respond to it. But if that's not the right protocol, please let me know. 
Uh, Mr. Hickman, actually, that is, we do, we are responsive and every corrective action that it's being addressed now will be addressed and be dealt with prior to the next certification. So nothing is generally uh, passed over to the next year and we do address those and then we do uh, issue a finding of those corrective actions to the uh, betterment or to the um, positive responses to uh, those uh, corrective actions, we do issue a, a solution to them. And that, that will come back to CAC to, to review? It, it can. I'm not sure. The pro, I've been here only since the middle of March, so I'm wondering, I'm not sure how the MPO has handled it before, but we can make that a, an action or put an item on the agenda once everything has been addressed. Steve, we've never had this request before, but if you would like, we will coordinate with DOT and we'll kind of give you an update as we go along how we're addressing this uh, periodically. Because we cannot get to all of them within a week or a month, but over the year, we'll have to address these. Because the way this works, and you know, we have this annually with DOT, we also have every four years, we do sort of similar uh, certification review with our uh, Federal Highway Administration and Federal Transit Administration. And the findings are all also presented to you. But for this annual one with DOT, we'll work with DOT to see how best we can present to you at the CAC level, how the MPO is progressing towards the goal of taking care of all of these recommended actions. Thank you. Well, okay, that sounds pretty uh, good. So, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Todd, can yes. you unmute Jensen? He's trying to say something. Go ahead. We're, we're, did you, did, did you, you want know, to I'm say something? I'm trying to get to Todd to unmute Jensen. Go ahead, Jensen, see if you Thank can. Thank you, oh, Todd. Sorry, wrong person. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jensen. There we go, everybody can hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, Jensen Hackett with uh, FDOT for the record. Um, just kind of listening to this uh, part of the conversation. Um, this isn't an actual audit. I just wanted to clear that up just from the onset. Um, but there are some uh, verbiage that's in the certification that does make it seem like it's more of an audit process, um, especially when we're talking about the corrective actions there at the bottom. This is the first time in my knowledge, um, at least in the past three or four years, that we have actually placed um, as DOT um, corrective actions on the certification. Um, these are just some of the uh, specifics that were part of the recommendations in prior years that still have yet to be corrected and or addressed by the NPO. Um, so that's why they've moved down into the corrective actions, um, just as kind of a more a serious item um, that needs to be corrected. Um, but when we are doing this process, Manny kind of hinted at it, we do the certification from District 7 to the MPOs inside of District 7 every year. And there is a quadrennial review, which is done by FHWA and FTA, um, which is every four years. And actually next year, um, I believe, is the year that PASCO is getting the quadrennial review. So with all of these uh, recommendations and corrective actions, we just look at this as a snapshot in time. So back in February and March, when we were reviewing this, um, we were looking at uh, the calendar year of 2019 for the past MPO. Um, so we were just looking at that snapshot in time. So these comments that are recommendations and corrective actions are just something that should be addressed in any way, shape or form by the MPO. Um, and those we will then review calendar year 20 and see if those recommendations and corrective actions have been um, taken care of. And that's when we will adjust the list. So um, based on what the MPO does the rest of this calendar year, when we go do the um, new certification, which will be in line with the quadrennial review next spring, um, that's when you will see some of these items to see if they have been taken care of or not by the MPO. But in terms of as a district from District 7, we're always watching and always working with the MPO um, to make sure that these uh, recommendations and corrective actions are addressed by the MPO in an ongoing basis. 
and not once every year when we do the review. Okay. okay. Yeah, sounds good, um, Jensen, thank you. Now, does anyone else on the CAC committee have questions regarding this matter? Then I guess Marilyn, I'm Manny. Mar yeah. Marilyn, sorry, this is Melanie Monson. I just first yeah. wanted to um, commend the, the uh, MPO on the achievements that you've had that I, I we're, when you look at them, that you do have some great achievements. So we, we do appreciate what you do, and I want to make sure that was on record for sure. Um, I also wanted to just to, for housekeeping for Todd, we have Tom Ryan and he was having problems. He's on the call and I wondered if you could unmute his landline, which is 813-926-0827 if he, to give him ability to talk when he needs to. Okay, he has been unmuted. Thank you. Great, thanks. I haven't been able to vote, but I sat through the votes. <laughs> so I guess I'm an observer. Um, well, can uh, Manny, can Tom um, be considered present at this meeting? I, I think so. David, what do you think? I mean, he's a board member. Uh, of course, he's, it will just show him as arriving late. Yeah. Okay, we have been on all this time. Yeah. Yes, you, yeah. you would just, you would show I'm in attendance. We just have them arriving late. That's correct. All righty. Okay. Well, welcome, Tom. Uh, good that you're. I've been born. watching you and listening. It's kind of, I. I. We have to get some uh, desktops with video cameras. We don't have them, so I can't. I can't show you. I'm hearing you. Yes, and so am I. I'm on the phone. I think a few of us are. All righty then. Now. We have now discussed this uh, agenda item. Excellent questions from Steve. Um, All righty then, do we have any other member of the CAC that wishes to make a comment? If not, I'm looking for a motion. Melanie Monson, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, and do I have a second? Rob Sirkew, I'll second. All righty. Then uh, we'll go down the list and, um, oh dear, I take so many notes here that, okay, our list. Melanie, Melanie did you okay. go through? Melanie, can you start, please? So Melanie, also, uh, di didn't you just mention that? Melanie will approve. Yeah, okay. Sandy Graves approve. Uh-huh. Rob? Um, sir, Q, approve. Uh, Steve? Steve, I can approve. Um, and then Clinton. And uh, Clinton? Clinton Wynn approves. And uh, Mar uh, the, me. <laughs> okay, oh, cool. what we Hold have. On. Tom Ryan approves. Oh, good. Tom, let me add you here. <sighs> Never done anything like this. Okay, then we have an approval, and no one. Um, has a well we've had our comments so with um with that we now can move on to the next item that item is agenda number uh, 6c on page 30. is everyone there okay so what we have here is uh mpo planning agreement resolution what, what's this about manny uh yes ma'am this is ronnie blocks here with the mpo staff this okay. planning agreement is the funds that we get every um, every year, basically for a two year period. Our current planning agreement expires this June thirtieth, and uh, we're in need of um, utilizing our new planning funds for the next two years, uh, which spans from July first of twenty twenty through June thirtieth of twenty twenty two, and. The planning funds that we get coincides a lot with our UPWP. Our UPWP is basically our budget of what the activities that the MPO will do over the next two years. So those planning mm -hmm. funds are allocated to different tasks. And as Ari had mentioned, there's some things that we're doing with regards to studies, pays for salaries, things of that nature. Um, and so this is the agreement that we have. And in order for this to be utilized, we have to uh, enter into agreement with FDOT 
uh, that specifies the scope of our planning work, which is, like I said, our UPWP and the products in the time frame that we generally do within that planning, uh, the two-year period. And the recommendation is for the MPO staff to recommend the COC approve this agreement and that it be passed along for the to the MPO board for final approval. And I'll stand for any questions. Okay, so this also includes several pages following, correct? About the agreement? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, so I'm looking at all of this. Does anyone <clears throat> on the CAC committee have any questions regarding this matter? If not, I'm looking for a motion. I, I can't hear. I make a motion we approve. All right, Sandy. Sandy Graves, sorry. Yes. And then we have uh, a second. You all second. All right, Sandy and Rob. <clears throat> now, do we have any other further questions before we go through the approval process? All right, Melanie, uh, do you Melanie approve? Mon Melanie Monson approve. Sandy does. Sandy Graves Rob. Approve. Yep. And Rob does. Rob we need the second. Uh huh. Steve. Approved. Uh, Clinton. Clinton Wynn approves. And then Tom. Approved. And I also approve. So, with that being said, I guess we can now um, complete this item and move on to the next. Let's, let me scroll down here a bit. Now, let's see. Oh, wow, there's a lot of pages to this. All right, next item, 7A, Citizens Advisory Committee, draft priority projects. Um, who's going to handle that? Marilyn, it's Tina Russo, MPO staff, active transportation planner. Um, okay. On page 46 of, of your packet. Uh-huh. We have the notice for comments for our list of priority projects. We're about halfway through that um, comment time frame. But mm -hmm. um, the draft is on the website. It's about 16 pages long, and it is a draft. We've been receiving several comments. Um, and after the discussion that we had about our certification, one of the main recommendations that DOT's made over the last several years is combining one of these those tables and we'll be talking about that in a minute something that we're really working on still and i'm adding to is some of our program highlights that we've mm -hmm. actually done um in the past that hasn't shown up quite a bit on our lop so we're really working that we can provide some information about projects and the status that they're in so instead of just seeing that priority go off the list, that project come off the list, we want to see what status it's in and where it's at once it does kind of come off the list, once it's become funded. Um, okay. Two of the ones that I've just done this past year is Jasmine and um, Old School Road. They were part of our TA projects. Um, we have another one that's in the past that's been put, that's in, that is funded, and that would be the Mitchell. Um, road, just learning a lot of these projects, and thankfully, Tania has helped me get acquainted with quite a few of these projects, mainly the road projects and some of the TA projects. I know most of the trail projects fairly well, but that will be updated um, before it is brought to you in June, and this will be brought to you in June to be approved, but there's several comments in the queue that we'll be adding to the LOP. The first thing I want to talk about is that table one. We used to have our regional trail projects and table one separate. It used to be two different tables. We now have combined our regional trail projects to table one. And a reason for that is, and I think Manny mentioned it already and Jensen can add to this, is that allows us to pursue more funding um, and it also pursue, um, lets us pursue other types of funding. 
I'm going to give you an example. Cody River underpass was one of our top TA projects. We're finishing up that feasibility study. It comes in right at about $4 million. That $4 million, our TA projects between four counties is about $3 million. So there's not a good chance that that project's going to get funded. If it does, it's going to take away from other projects. So we've moved that project to that table one to our regional trail projects. We're still um, cleaning up our table one. Well, that gives you a really good snapshot of our list of project projects um, that we have online for you to make comments and look at. So okay. I would like to add a couple of lines in the agenda item that Tina is referring to. There is a link to the LOPP. If you'd like to go screen, go through it, it's, as she said, 16 pages long. And um, we're addressing some of the comments we've already received. Uh, we're um, going to present to you next month the final draft mm -hmm. to be approved by the MPO in their June meeting. All right, um, final draft in, dra in June. All right. Madam Chair, Question? this is Ronnie Blackshear, MPO staff. I wanted to also add is that when we combine those lists, it doesn't mean that the TA the projects that are on the TA list go away. They're still eligible for funding, but as Tina said, that some of these projects are so large as far as the amount of money needed to complete them, that they will absorb the amount of funds that are available for the district. So it's still there in a sense that it could possibly get funding from there, but moving it to the main list, the major list, as Tina indicated, opens up the funding sources, additional funding sources for it. Thank you. Oh, all right. Does the CAC member members have any other questions? All this right. Is, now th this is Melanie. Sorry, Madam yeah. Chairman. No problem. So when you combine those, and and I'm sure I know this, but I just wanted to ask: Does that um, make some of them that were higher priorities on the other chart be shifted down? So it changes the the um, priority numbering you know it does a little bit but it gets them recognized differently um so it does move them and we're cleaning up that list quite a bit right now there are several on the top there that's going to actually come off on that table one that are in status or programmed so those will get moved around um being on that and it's the reason why i think dot and jensen can correct me the reason why is they want that one list that lets them look at those those projects realistically with the funding that they have and types of funding to see if they can provide the funding. Um, TA again, as we all know, different animal, and we're getting a little bit better staff wise on looking at that bigger picture and how best to prioritize our projects so they find so we can get the funding to get them happening. Thank you. Okay, yeah, Tina, have... and, oops, sorry, Marilyn. No, go ahead. Go right ahead. Um, yeah, so yeah, Tina was correct in saying that. Um, I think that one of the biggest things for us was that um, by combining the regional trails with your multimodal list, which is the capacity, um, all those uh, projects have, makes a lot more sense than combining it with your TA because the TA, when we're looking at the TA as a district, um, we only get a few million dollars or so every year to be able to um, fund TA projects. And that has to be split between the entire District 7. So that's split between not only Pasco, but also Pinellas, um, Hillsborough, and Hernando Citrus for those projects. So right now with what's on your TA list, which is a whole bunch of sidewalk and um, a couple of the um, uh, smaller cost uh, trail projects, those are good candidates for that because those projects only run um, usually in the hundreds of thousands to maybe maybe a million dollars or so. Um, so those are really easy to get that uh, TA funding for those. When you're looking at some of these, what you guys formerly had on your regional trails list, these are much larger projects. There's a lot of overpasses on there, um, a, lot of, a lot of regional trail connection projects on there that cost you know, three, four, five, six, seven million dollars. And by putting those on a TA list, 
when the district can only give you um, a very limited amount of funding in order to get something that's five, six, seven million dollars funded through TA, you may have that on your list for 10 or 15 years before we can totally fund that. So by utilizing your multimodal, which can tap into a whole bunch of different funding sources that we have available, we can get those trail projects um, and overpass projects uh, prioritized with you guys and then hopefully fund it a lot sooner than we would have um, by putting them onto the TA. And the issue with the uh, regional trails list um, was that when, how it was listed before didn't actually have a funding source tied to it. Um, so those projects that were there weren't able to get any type of funding because that wasn't a viable, um, when we're looking at that to program projects, that's not a uh, viable funding source as a, in quote here, regional trails list. Um, so that's why those projects have been moved over. And Melanie, like you did say, that would, in essence, bump some of those other capacity projects down the list. Um, however, um, a lot of those overpass projects are very important to the Pasco MPO um, by utilizing some of those funds that you can get from uh, the multimodal list. I think um, you'll be very satisfied with some of the uh, results that'll actually happen with getting some of those projects funded. All right. Thank you, Jensen. Yeah, thank you. Um, do uh, do we have anyone else from the CAC with questions for Jensen or for the staff? Well, I do have something I'd like to add myself. Um, I have been a proponent for working hard to get that underpass under from Port Ritchie over to New Port Ritchie under the bridge because you know, increasing business, connecting the two cities seemed like a good thing to do. However, taking into consideration of what's happening in today's world and the use of money in a wise manner. Also, the fact that I looked into liability issues for both cities. And I'm just going to say this, and that is um, I still would love to see a PED and bike path perhaps under the bridge if that's feasible. But I no longer would vote for having golf carts. Um, so I'm not sure if we have already discussed this matter. I'm just putting my thoughts in regarding that. All right, um, do we have any uh, questions before I ask for a motion? And, and, um, uh, Manny, this is not an action item, it's just okay, information. Good. I, I'm just going to ask you that, Manny. It was, it's more of an information. Okay, and I just gave you some information, too, so uh, whether it fits in or not. Very uh, good, then. Do Madam Chair, not? sorry, this is Melanie again. I'm sorry to keep interrupting. No, no problem. Um, Tina, I do not have an email for you. Is, uh, Tania, could you send me her email so I can um, send some thoughts back to you? Okay. Yes, I will. Oh, that's great. Great. Now, at this time, do we have any other questions? All right, then. Uh, uh, we don't, this was information, so we don't need to take a vote which means we move on now to item number 7B, which is the Citizens Advisory Committee um, draft uh, tip funding. Well, um, who's going to handle that? It's me, Marilyn. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Tania Gorman, Pasco MPO. Um, the TIP identifies a five-year uh, program from fiscal years 21 through 25. It lists all the transportation projects and programs funded with federal and state dollars within Pasco County. Last year, the MPO board approved the uh, list of priority projects, and that has been reflected in this year's TIP and the FDOT work program. Um, we will be providing a final presentation with highlights uh, from this year's tip on the June 11th MPO board meeting. Um, and currently we're still receiving comments from the public and stakeholders as it relates to the TIP. Once we've received all the comments, we're gonna go ahead and incorporate all those comments as we produce the final draft. And last year, to highlight some of the, few, some of the projects um, that were highlighted, in the TIP was the widening from two to four lanes 
on State Road 52. So that was from Schrader, um, east of US 41 to Bellamy Brothers. That's the widening. And then we had the interchange improvement southbound ramp from on I-75 from County Line Road to State Road 56. This year we have some highlights. And those are um, the widening of um, from two to four lanes from north of um, State Road US, for, uh, US 41, from north of Connerton Boulevard to 52. We have added lanes on US 301 from uh, 39 to County Road 54. And then we have four to six lane widening on US 301 from County uh, Road 54 to Cossack. And then I'm gonna let Jason review the 52 uh, change in some funding going on there so that you guys get a clear picture from what FDOT's trying to do because they're trying to help us fund the entire widening of 52, but it's gonna be broken up in different segments. So I'm gonna let Jensen elaborate on that. And Todd, can you um, unmute him? Thank you. Thank you. Um, did, you did you say Jensen's going to add something? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, hey. hello. Hi, Marilyn. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so, for uh, 52, um, this was a project that was number one on the priority list um, going into uh, last year's cycle. Um, so what we were able to do is we were able to um, program this uh, for fiscal year 25. So this is um, would be uh, the later part of um, calendar year 24 into calendar year 25. That's the state fiscal year of 25. Um, with this project being uh, upwards of about $92 million for construction, um, we had to split this project um, into uh, two segments. Uh, one segment, um, which is the first segment, would be from State Road 41 to Aaron Cutoff. And the second segment is um, Aaron Cutoff to Bellamy Brothers, just to the west side of 75. Um, so this was uh, just due to uh, budgetary constraints um, in being able to fund the entire $92 million portion. Um, so what will occur with this is we are hoping to do a um, June, July letting is what we call this. Um, so the funds for the portion from 41 to Aaron Cutoff would end up being um, in fiscal year 25. Um, and the funds, hopefully, um, if this project stays as your number one priority, uh, we can fund the Aaron cutoff to Bellamy Brothers portion in fiscal year 26. Um, what we would do with the June, July budding portion is um, the first part of the project to Aaron cutoff would um, let in June, and the other portion of the project would let in July. And because the state fiscal year starts July 1st, that would be a June of fiscal year 25 letting and a July of fiscal year 26 letting. So in all intents and purposes, it looks like the construction is getting underway simultaneously. Um, but to secure the funding in the two different years, um, that's why that would be under a June, July. Letting. So that's why I'm um, going back to Tina's presentation just a bit ago. That's why State Road 52 is still as the number one priority. Um, on your priority list for uh, funding consideration for fiscal year 26 when the work program opens later on this fall so that we can program the entire portion of 52 for widening for you guys. Okay. Do we have any questions for Jensen? No questions? All right. Now, Manny, this is a uh, informational piece only. That's correct, Marilyn. We'll bring you the final uh, draft in the June meeting. Okay. Uh, and uh, MPO will approve in June, on their June uh, scheduled meeting in June. All right, then. So we don't have any questions. And I think that it was a very thorough um, presentation. And I thank um, all staff members involved for doing that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, with that, we usually have a bottom page that tells us about all the meetings going on uh, and uh, next meeting, et cetera. So this is the end of our formal meeting, correct, Manny? Yeah, so, you know, we didn't have any uh, upcoming meetings to list in mm -hmm. there. 
So right. the next agenda item would be agenda item 11. It's a round table between you guys, if you have so, any okay, topics we'll, you okay, want to talk about. Madam Chairman? Yes, the round table. Oh, skip, Madam Chairman, this is Kurt Scheibel, PCBT. Are we going to skip number oh, hi, Kurt. Nine? If not, I will be glad to sign off. You will what, Kurt? Uh, you do not want an update from PCBT? If so, then I will Oh, I'm sorry. Off. Were you on the agenda? I'm so sorry. Um, See, the way I've got this thing, I'm on page just, at the very uh, bottom. Okay, let's take a peek here. Action items, status reports, and uh, yeah. I, are you the last one on the list there? I, uh, I, well, did you not yeah. have any uh, CMP items? Oh, no. I mean, I'm sorry. I just didn't have the agenda page in front of me. I was in the packet. Um, so why don't you give us a... a you know, an update on what's going on with uh, your department. I'll be glad to. Um, as Thank request, you. As requested, you are correct. The transit patterns are going to be changing, especially for riding the buses. Um, mm -hmm. The state is right now um, figuring out what is going to be happening. I'm on the committee for the state uh, for determining uh, direction. We gave a letter to the governor about two weeks ago on what is needed and what we're looking for as a transit uh, system throughout the states. Uh, I was part of that team and we're looking at different items because having a full bus of 40 people on the bus may or may not be something that we can do in the future with the way the coronavirus works. Mm -hmm. So right. there's a lot of talk about that. And then how do we fund that? Because uh, it's one thing to say we need three new buses, another thing to come up with the uh, $15 million to pay for it. So that is um, a lot of what's going on right now is where we're moving forward. Uh, we have another round of meetings this uh, next week or the week after with a recommendation from the executive team uh, back to the governor, hopefully sometime around uh, June-ish. Okay. Some uh, good stuff. Um, our yeah. buses were delayed from uh, our, uh, that we purchased eight new buses. They were delayed. They should be starting back up in June, according to Gilly. And that means that we'll be moving forward from there. With the county's financial situation being what it is, we will not be starting Shady Hills route until probably October 5th. So that has been pushed back just due to budgetary concerns, but we are working towards that. Now, some other good news and it, uh, that this uh, CAC will be uh, highly involved in and have a voice in is that we're going to start a comprehensive operational analysis probably when you get back from the July break. Uh, it depends on how everything goes through. What the comprehensive operational analysis is or COA is a complete top to re bottom review of our system. Some routes we get very few people on. Some routes have a lot of people on. Well, how do I make sure that I'm serving the community properly? The last one was accomplished probably in early 2000 when new routes were put in place. Well, we're going to completely revamp our route structure, folks, and you're going to have a we're going to want to sit down and talk with you on what you think we should be doing for transportation on that. So you can plan on something like that, probably in October, November, and uh, plan on a relatively uh, involved discussion. So think about places where you think buses should go and what uh, frequencies and so forth should be across the whole county. So please be aware of that. Um, Very good. Mm -hmm. Lastly, um, we are working on uh, a bunch of new initiatives. Um, our budget is uh, probably going to be uh, reduced, so I'm not sure where we're going to be for expansion, but we are working on ways to move forward and going from there. I want to keep it short because we've been going for a while. Unless anybody has any questions for me, uh, I'm, uh, I'm complete, and I will need to sign off because I do have another meeting here in just a little bit. Well, thank you so much, Kurt, for being there, and uh, apologies for my oversight. And from the CAC committee, do we have anyone with questions for Kurt? Well, very good presentation, a lot of good information, and uh, looking forward to hearing more about it this fall. Um, so this is an information item, and no uh, vote is required. Is that correct, uh, Manny? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good then. So looking at the agenda... Uh, are we complete now? Are we finished with that and ready to go for the round table? That's correct. Okay, um, very good. Actually, the, the congestion management practice uh, uh, 
the items that I mean the congestion management process the, that you in the past requested us to look over I usually give a little report regarding that okay um, um, and who, some of the, who's speaking this is Ari Rivero with MPO oh Ari okay yes congestion um, management process correct and um, so I, I just let you know the you know the the things that we did we were able to to do regarding your comments so you did um, bring up some uh, landscaping maintenance and uh, trees to be trimmed at uh, Hicks coming south to make a right turn on, at, on State Road 52 and at the intersection of Clinton and Prospect. And I did forward that to the um, Assistant Director of Public Works. Also, um, I did email Port Ritchie to see if we could get representation at the CAC per your request. I um, emailed engineering services and traffic ops uh, regarding your request for a dedicated right turn lane going south on Grand to make a right turn on um, State Road 54. Um, and uh, I did also talk to uh, email her regarding that bus stop at the internet uh, intersection of US 19 and call um, and they're looking at that um, basically those were the items and I'm not sure if Jensen has uh, any news regarding the um, beautification project um, on US 41 in Hillsborough um, some that was brought up to see if that could be extended into Pasco and um, also the Colonial Hills and State Road 54 maintenance uh, pond uh, item. Oh. Yeah, hey Ari, um, just a real quick synopsis on those um, items from the last CAC that we had. Um, so for the uh, State Road 54 and Colonial Hills, um, that was the pond maintenance that was brought up um, as a little bit of an issue there in front of the Colonial Hills development um, over in uh, Newport Ritchie on 54. Um, we were able to send out our maintenance crews from Pasco and Hernando to take care of that. Um, so that's going to be um, under constant watch now. Um, so that's been taken care of um, and mowed and everything has been put out of there. Um, in terms of the beautification project, which I know was um, suggested that that uh, project that we undertook down at the apex of Florida and Nebraska, just north of Bears Avenue in Hillsborough County, um, if something like that could be brought up 41. Um, I have forwarded that on to um, uh, some staff internally who are taking a look at that with the county to see what can be done uh, further up on 54 um, north of the Dale Mabry and uh, 41 Apex up towards uh, Land of Lakes there. Um, so we're looking into that right now uh, with Pasco County to get something like that there. And then the uh, previously at a couple of our uh, CSC meetings, there was discussion about uh, 41 and 52. So I again forwarded this to our traffic ops and obviously with the uh, COVID kind of concerns, traffic has free -falled. Um, so right now, we're not going to adjust anything at the intersection of US 41 and State Road 52. Um, it's going to have to be a kind of wait and see how traffic rebounds and if there's anything that we could do. Um, just because the past couple months, we haven't had any um, noticeable um, traffic issues at that intersection just because of the decrease. In the right. So we're going to have to revisit that uh, if traffic does start to pick up in the summer and over the fall to see if there's something that we can do to retime those lights if traffic does. Okay. What's that? I said, it's picking up. I've been walking 41 every day. Okay. Well, that's a good has. We've been seeing a rebound, yep. Oh, okay, um, all right. <laughs> do we have any comments? for the speakers Mayor, regarding congestion management. Mayor, Mayor, Any addition? Yes. Mm -hmm. And this question really is for Jensen for a future follow-up. You know, one of our meetings, we talked about a temporary traffic light 
at Clinton and Prospect. Mm-hmm. And I think you, I think you're going to check into it and see if that was something that it was unusual. You mentioned to me that to do that during the construction process, that you would check it could be done because of the traffic snow. And it hasn't been bad uh, lately because we've been under, uh, for lack of a better word, quarantine. But as as more and more businesses open up and the traffic will continue to increase, it was backed up for quite a ways during rush hour times at Clinton and Prospect because of the, of the construction. Is there a way to uh, put a temporary light there? So See that for, for that, Jensen? Yep, yeah. I'm sorry, Marilyn. Um, Thank you. So with that one for our uh, traffic operations, it was they looked into doing something like that, but it's really difficult to do that um, since currently those are not our roadways. And I think I mentioned that to you uh, earlier this year. Yeah. Um, so in order to be able to do that with the span wire, um, with a temporary signal and then redoing the electric work, it's not feasible because we know that that's gonna be redone anyways. Um, it's too early for us to put out the um, full mass signals there um, because as we're doing the electrical work um, as well as the roadway work on that, um, we can't put up the actual mass arm signals at this point until we really have some clearing going on in that area. Um, with that still being county at this point, um, I think the best contact would be the county. I'm not sure if the MPO um, wants to say something about this to see if we can get some temporary relief there at that even if it's a stop sign potentially in all directions like if it was a three-way stop um that could be something but since it's in the realm of the county currently uh, that would be something that the county would have to do with their traffic operations um, in terms of doing like some kind of three-way stop mechanism location steve this is manny um mm -hmm. or you can Kind of this jog us down as a CMP question, but we'll approach our traffic operations. I believe I don't want to. Oh dear, hello. Or somebody just comment just oh. the way Jensen Good. mentioned, but we'll we can ask them. Okay. Hello, I'm I'm losing it. No, I can hear you, Marilyn. Can you hear me? Oh, oh good, good, good. Okay, yes, I can. Um, all right, Sandy, were you uh, making comment? No, I was not making a comment, oh, but I would oh, like okay. to say I need to go, so I'll just, I'll oh, hear. Okay. So instead of saying right. I'll see you in June, I'll just hear you in June, I guess. So y'all okay. take care. Be safe. Yeah. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate it. Thanks. Y'all take mm -hmm. care. Mm-hmm. This is David uh, okay. Goldstein. I need to sign off also. Okay, very good, David. And thank you for being there and helping us out today. No problem. Thank you. And uh, Manny, were you completed with your comments? I, I did. I hope Steve heard me, and we're going to address Manny. that. Uh, we, I guess the next... Yes. Uh, I okay. don't know if you want to go around, Marilyn, for the yeah, CAC I, number. I, I wanted to go around, because that is the last item, correct? Well, there is actually one more is talking about the June 3rd meeting. After yes. that. What about the June meeting? That would be our your next CAC meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Same time uh, regarding place. Uh, I'm, and that would be June. Um, I don't have my calendar in front of me. Uh, you will be sending us June, what, 5, you say? Okay. Um, very good. At this time, do we have anyone who wants to make some comments with the uh, round table before we sign off? Marilyn, this is this is Melanie. Oh, hey there. I just want to give you a thumbs up. I know this is difficult and it's hard enough when you can see faces and <laughs> be able to interact that way, but it's very difficult. I I know when you can't see faces. So thank you yeah. for sticking with us and you've done a great <laughs> job. We appreciate it. And this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So yeah, <laughs> welcome yeah. to the 21st century. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> thank right. you so much. Now, how about the rest of you? Anyone have any additional comments before we leave? Marilyn, Steve, okay. I want to echo 
Melanie you're Coleman, gonna go. very good job. Oh, oh, all right, thank you. And before we do go, I do have a comment myself, and I'm gonna keep it short. We are in very curious times right now. It will affect how future planning goes forward and how much. And one thing I want for not only the MPO staff, but also our commissioners to keep in mind that there are lands, uh, portions of land set aside in Pasco County uh, part, through that preservation plan we refer to as ELAMP. Beyond that, we also have precious wetlands. So as this county grows and develops and put down, puts down more roads if necessary and probably will, we have to make sure that uh, MPO, um, the state, FDOT, all members involved are being aware that there's more at stake than just building more roads and more buildings. So, okay, with that, I am complete. Does anyone else have any comments before we adjourn? Okay, then, with that, I guess we are adjourned with this meeting, and thank you very much to all of you for attending. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, everyone.